Hello, and welcome to the CNI intro session given by two maintainers of the CNI project. If you're new to CNI, we'll give an overview in just a moment. If you have questions, we are live online, so as this goes out, so please start asking. As an introductory session, this is a high level and pretty much starts at the beginning from CNI. You may also wish to join us for the CNI deep dive session, which is being published on Wednesday. So first, some introductions. Brian? Uh, thanks, Casey. Hi, I'm. my name is Brian Borum. Uh, I work for Weaveworks and uh, uh, known, at least to begin with, for WeaveNet, but perhaps better known for GitOps these days. Anyway, I've been the lead maintainer on WeaveNet for uh, over five years now, and I'm a maintainer on the CNI project, and I, I work on a few other uh, CNCF projects uh, like Cortex. Casey, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Casey Calandrello. I am an engineer at Red Hat, previously CoreOS. I work on Kubernetes networking, OpenShift networking, and the OVN Kubernetes project. Also maintain some utilities that people tend to use, like Go IP tables, for which I'm somewhat sorry. Uh, I like IPv6 and jumbo frames and the Kubernetes informer system, and I dislike NAT and the Kubernetes informer system. So we'll start out with Brian uh, explaining what exactly is CNI. Thanks, Casey. Um, so we put a uh, the big picture here. The uh, just has three things on it: you, your container, and the network. And um, and CNI sits in the middle. So this represents uh, the the big picture. The point we're trying to make here is that um, uh, CNI is intended to sit in a world where People use all different kinds of networks. They use all different kinds of ways of getting their containers working. And we'll go into more detail about that uh, as, as this talk progresses. Um, but, but fundamentally, it's, it's the bit in the middle. It's, uh, uh, it exists as a, a common ground interface so that um, all different companies and, and people can contribute to this world and, and have them work together. So um, here's a, a more detailed picture. Uh, the um, uh, what we've got on on the right uh, representing the um, container runtime. Uh, yeah, so it's it, you know it's not literally the person that sets up a container. It's some software, um, perhaps using Kubernetes. Although CNI works with um, others, Mesos, Cloud Foundry, a whole bunch of different. Um, orchestrators for containers. Um, and those go through some kind of container runtime like uh, Podman, Cryo, Container D. Um, so, so that's kind of putting more detail on the, uh, on the whole um, uh, ecosystem on the right. Um, and the CNI project is everything in this box here. Um, it's, uh, uh, things that the libraries that the runtime calls, its plugins which implement the actual network connection. Um, and we'll come back to more detail on this uh, in a bit. Uh, Casey, why don't you tell us a bit more about the, um, the project? Sure. So we're both here as maintainers of the CNI project, which is an organization under the CNCF umbrella. As a project, we have two major outputs. The first is the CNI specification document, which defines the CNI protocol, and a refer reference implementation in Go of that protocol. This reference implementation, as it happens, is used by both container runtimes and CNI plugins, and it's generally widely used, although not the only implementation of CNI used in the industry. Uh, this, this section of the project, or this output, has a pretty slow, relatively stable release cycle as befitting a specification. The second output of the CNI project, or consumable, is a suite of commonly used CNI plugins. These include some basic connectivity plugins, such as Bridge, and some chained utility plugins like bandwidth limiting, host port mapping, and some other tweaks. Uh, most of the plugins are Linux only, but we do have a selection of Windows plugins maintained by Microsoft and other contributors. Um, and you can find, all, of course, all of these on GitHub. To dive in a little bit more into the specification, 
the specification really is the heart of CNI, right? It defines the protocol between the runtime and the plugin, as, as Brian showed earlier. Because the CNI specification is a simple, vendor-neutral, stable specification, it's an industry standard that's widely used. It's not just used by Kubernetes. It's by Mesos, Cloud Foundry, et cetera, et cetera. We see, we've seen the list before. Um, the key part of the specification is how plugins are discovered by the runtime, the execution flow, uh, the data types uh, for both configuration and the data types for responses as well. The specification is not complicated. Generally, it's backwards compatible. Uh, for the average end user, the specification is probably not going to concern you too, too much other than perhaps the version, but it's good to know that the document exists and you could probably read it if you needed to. Uh, the next question for you, Brian, then, is what isn't CNI? Uh, yeah, um, so we thought we, we'd put this in because um, uh, as maintainers on the CNI project, um, uh, you know, almost any problem you're having with your system can look like a network problem. So um, so we do get a lot of uh, different questions. And, and unfortunately, we don't... Um, we don't do every part of the, the network uh, picture. Um, so CNI is really about con connecting containers or, or pods to the network. Um, and if you're using a system like Kubernetes, it, it will provide in different ways, things like load balancing, service discovery, um, network policy. There's, uh, there's all these different things that, um, go together uh, and and CNI is kind of, I mean, the CNI project itself is this little bit of glue um, and, and very little, uh, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of problems come from elsewhere. Um, it's also, as I mentioned already, CNI is not Kubernetes specific. Um, so uh, even if we could perhaps um, make a change in CNI uh, that, that would um, you know, we, we have to, we have to be even handed across all those different, uh, systems. And, um, and the CNI project, although we do have some plugins that, that we're going to talk about, uh, in our, um, repo, um, uh, a lot of people are using, uh, third party ones that, that, you know, I, I work on one, as I said, we've net, uh, Calico is very popular, Cilium, there's, there's a whole, um, bunch of them and that's great you know that is the whole point to to allow uh different people to to implement things so um yeah so C the cni uh that we're representing as maintainers of the project um is the uh is is the bit in the middle and there's all this other world that is not the cni project although we you know we we talk to those folks um and uh generally work together pretty well, but it's not the whole world. Uh, so uh, let's take a deeper look into how does it all work, Casey? For context, we can go and dive a bit more deeply into this diagram. As we had said before, CNI is the protocol for container runtimes, which we see here on the right, which is Podman, et cetera, et cetera, to request that a network plugin, such as weave or flannel, which we see here on the left, connect a container to the network. Your container runtime is going to first create the container, then it's going to call out to its CNI plugin, which will create and configure a network interface or more than one network interface in the container's namespace. We see here libcni, which is our reference implementation, usually mediates both sides of the protocol. Um, how the CNI plugin actually works is not defined in the specification. Likewise, the plugin doesn't need to know anything about the container runtime, so it is abstracted over that. Um, note, by the way, on this picture, this is just an aside, that, but it's an important understanding to have. The kubelet is not present on this slide. So remember, the kubelet doesn't actually create containers itself. It talks to its container runtime engines via something known as the CRI, or Container Runtime Interface. The CRI implemented by runtimes is what actually creates the container and the runtime is responsible in the Kubernetes world for doing the lib CN, for doing the CNI interaction. Uh, next up, Brian is gonna tell us a bit about the execution flow. Yeah, so um, so if you keep that 
picture in mind the the runtime calling the plugin it it can uh, call it with one of four different commands we we only have four at the moment so it's pretty simple um add adds an interface delete takes it away uh, and then there's some um, uh, check and version a uh, check to check that things are still the way you thought they were and and version just uh, you know administratively finding out what version the thing you're talking to is um plugins are executable so they, that's the way you call a cni plugin is you run a program and the program is the plugin uh, it's a really simple interface um the um details about what to do are passed in on standard in on this program that you're running uh, in in adjacent format and uh, standard out uh, comes the answer the response from the plugin um, so the whole thing is just extremely simple and um, uh, that is the whole mechanism of calling a cni plugin uh, okay so casey take us through uh, what that looks like when you actually make a Sure. So this is the configuration format. Uh, it's the CNI standard. It's a JSON-based configuration, and it usually lives on disk. Uh, it is consumed somewhat. It's consumed by both the runtime and the plugin. And unfortunately, it looks like the highlighting hasn't carried through. Um, I'd like to point out. So the first three configurations fields here: version, name, and type are consumed by both the runtime and the plugin. So they are used for version negotiation and plugin discovery. Um, the remaining sections of this sample configuration file are plugin specific. So they are not consumed by the runtime. They're not even really part of the CNI specification. So as such, they are open for you as a plugin maintainer or a system administrator to use. So it's a really simple format and uh, it's a little bit of a hybrid of both the runtime and the plugin side configuration in a single file. However, a simple configuration file has wound up to not be flexible enough. So in specification version, there we go. OK. So uh, the spec version 0 0.3 has, we've defined something called dynamic configuration, or in this case, we're calling runtime configuration. Uh, this is a way for a CNI configuration file to signify to the runtime where it might want some container-specific configuration to be inserted. And this means that configuration files can mostly live on disk and mostly be static. However, the actual interaction between the runtime and the plugin can be dynamic. So on the left, we would see a JSON configuration file on disk. It's very simple, it's, but we see here it has this section capabilities, and it says that I support the port mapping capability. Well, for each container invocation, if the runtime so desires, it may substitute a port mapping capability with some port mapping runtime configuration, where we see that this particular container happens to have a host port configured, a container port. This is to say, we would like a very specific chunk of container specific information substituted into the configuration. And then the other exciting thing in spec 0.3 is plugin chaining, and Brian's going to talk to you about that. Yeah, chaining, calling a chain or a sequence of plugins in a row um, allows us to uh, compose functionality to, to add things in. Um, so not every plugin has to kind of paste in all of the features that people want. Um, so this example uh, on, on the slide, um, has, has two plugins listed. The, the bridge plugin, which is, is, um, you know, just just uh, bridging all the traffic from several containers, um, and then followed by a port forward plugin. So it's kind of the same example or same area that, that Casey was just talking about. Um, if I want to uh, bring out some ports from my container to the host, the port that's what the port forward plugin does, and um, and the bridge and WeaveNet and uh, Calico and whatever do not have to re-implement that functionality because they can they can put it in a chain, or more specifically, the person uh, configuring the network, configuring your own cluster, can can construct that chain in exactly the way you want to do it. So um, so that's a powerful feature. Um, each plugin in a chain operates on on one interface. Um, so this is this is not about running 
like the same plugin multiple times to give you multiple interfaces. Um, you, you just, you know, if you, if you want to do that, you just do it with, with, uh, separate configs. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but yeah, that's plugin chaining. So next Brian is going to talk to us about how the CNI project actually works as a open source project. Um, so we have uh, the the parts that we've talked about already. The the spec um, this is actively maintained. We we have a maintainers meeting uh, every week, and we we look at uh, questions that have come in or, or issues raised against the spec. Um, people submit PRs against the spec, uh, but it tends to happen quite slowly because the this making a change in the spec might require a lot of plugin authors to to do rework um so it tends to evolve very slowly over time we uh are really close to um announcing 1.0 which a lot of people are looking forward to because that that'll be a declaration that we're really going to try even harder not to change anything fundamental in the spec um so that's that's close month month or so is what we're thinking right now. Um, the plugins, however, uh, have, go much faster. You know, they're they're individual bits of software. Um, features are added, bugs are fixed. Uh, just you know, as as they come up, um, and we we have even more contributors there. A lot of people from. Um, around the world using CNI software uh, and they come across something they'd like or they come across bug and they can, uh, if they know Go code, they can submit a PR. Um, and like I say, we, we do a maintainers meeting once a week. That tends to be where we, we sweep through things that have come in and, and um, make sure we catch up on all of them. Uh, and at the bottom of the slide, uh, kubenet, kube proxy, anything like that is is the Kubernetes project. It's not the CNI project, and um, they have an organization, uh, Sig Network, uh, which which kind of owns all that stuff. Um, so, although we're very good friends with those people, it's it's a different project, works on in a different way, and it's not part of what we're talking about in this talk. So we have um, seven maintainers uh, right now. And as you can see, they come from um, a bunch of different companies, um, typically software companies. So, I mean, you know, we're not really network people. Uh, we're not, we're not network engineers by trade. Um, so uh, we're mostly kind of application developer type people who happen to know a bit about networks and wish to contribute. It's really a volunteer effort. Um, you know, we're, there's no kind of billion dollar business on the back of CNI. Uh, so, um, so those are the people that uh, um, you have to thank for uh, making this thing move forward each week. Um, so talking about what's happened recently, uh, in the spec 0.4, that was the most recent version that went out. We, um, we added this check command, which took a lot of, of debate and, and thinking about how to do it. Um, we, uh, added static IP support changing, support for changing the Mac, um, layer two bridges and, uh, uh, yeah, a little thing that was needed to play better with the Kubernetes device plugins. So, um, I won't read the whole list, but, uh, you know, you can, you can go over to the GitHub slash container network slash CNI or plugins, uh, see everything that's been going on. Um, CVEs, that's, that's a kind of colloquial term for, for security vulnerabilities, uh, do come up and those generally cause us to, to jump. Uh, although we tend to have to do that in secret, um, because we are trying to get the fix out before the problem is widely known. Um, anyway, that uh, the deep dive session, which if you're watching live is tomorrow. Um, it, I go into uh, quite a bit of detail about, uh, some vulnerabilities we dealt with recently. So if you're interested, do come along to the deep dive, CNI deep dive session. 
All right, I'm going to hand over to Casey to talk about what's coming up next. So, uh, again, I seem to have trouble advancing the slides if someone could help me out. In any case, oops. All right, there we go. So uh, what's next, right? As we said, 1.0, we essentially consider it to be feature complete. The spec is essentially stable. We, we essentially need to crystallize that. In order to cut 1.0, we need a bit more precise specification language that just needs to be tightened up a bit. And we'd like a more secure or signed release binary as a, a, a more secure release mechanism. What's next after that, we're starting to dream about the spec version 2.0 and what that might look like. Are we going to do something like gRPC, about which we'll chat a little bit more in a bit? Do we want a richer life cycle? Create and delete are, of course, important, but they're certainly not the only thing in a container life cycle, as we all know. Um, but the other, the other question for the community is, what do you want? What can CNI do to help advance the state of container networking? It's an open source project. It's a public specification. And we would absolutely love your input. A bit later, we'll talk about how you can get involved in the project. OK. So now we're going to quickly go through some frequently asked questions that often have come up when we've done these sorts of sessions before or in Slack and maintainers meeting and other emails. The first is. Why do some CNI program plugins, especially those in Kubernetes, come with a host side daemon? And the answer has to do with lifecycle. CNI is only concerned with the lifecycle of an individual container. That's pod, that's creation and deletion. You need some sort of long running process to maintain routing tables if you have a higher level system such as Kubernetes. Right? You need to react to events that happen across the cluster that are not container level events. The daemon might, for example, set up routes or react to node changes or something like that. Uh, a question for you, Brian, then, is, uh, Brian, can I have multiple interfaces in a pod? Uh, yes, you can, Casey. Um, so uh, CNI has always supported multiple interfaces in a pod, right? Right from the beginning, um, all you need to do is call it multiple times with uh, the, the different config that you need. Um, and uh, you can call the same plugin multiple times. You can call different plugins with different configs on the same container, and you will have multiple interfaces in your container. Um, the reason why this question gets asked so much, uh, I think generally stems from the fact that Kubernetes only supports one interface in, an, in a pod. Um, the, the, the plumbing, the, the number of concepts in Kubernetes that, um, that are based around the idea that there's only one interface is, is large and a huge amount of work to, um, shift from that position. So, um, so what people do, tend to do to work around that problem is, um, is they run a, a CNI plugin, which itself calls multiple CNI plugins. So Maltus is a good example of that. Um, there, there are a couple other out there, uh, CNI Genie, Dan M, uh, coming from predominantly a, a telecoms background. So, um, so if that's you, uh, if you're in the telecom world, definitely suggest taking a look at, at some of those. Um, also, you know, if, if you have ideas, uh, you know, back to what Casey was saying, w w what would you like next? Um, particularly if you want to, uh, uh, contribute code to help make those things happen. Please do, um, you know, show up in, uh, in the, uh, GitHub, uh, issues or in our Slack channel or some other way that we publish to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but yeah, so, so back to the, back to the simple question. CNI itself supports multiple interfaces. Kubernetes really only deals with one interface for a pod, um, but you can generally get around that by by faking it with something like Maltus. Well, gee, that took a long time. So Casey, you can uh, take the next one. What about deployment? Sure, right. So uh, if you have a CNI plugin, how might you deploy it, right? Well, the good news is that all you need to do is write a couple files to disk. You don't need to set up a daemon, unless you do. Uh, you don't need to do any complicated host level configuration. 
the best practice in the Kubernetes world is to use a daemon set that leaks these files onto host, but any mechanism by which you like to configure your nodes, this will work. Right? This will often be provided to you by your vendor. Uh, we would like to come up with a better story for how this is done. Um, perhaps the cluster add-on subproject as part of SIG cluster lifecycle will be the answer. So we have an answer, it's not great, but it works reasonably well for now. So Brian, do we support IPv6? Uh, yeah, we do, Casey. Well, again, uh, CNI um, supports IPv6. Uh, we added it into spec a couple of years ago and the, the plugins about a year ago. Um, all the plugins that we own anyway support uh, the, as the CNI project support IPv6 uh, for over a year. Um, again, uh, it's really complicated to plumb that into Kubernetes. And um, so uh, they made the first step, uh, which, which is if you want a cluster that's only IPv6, um, so that works pretty well. Uh, most people probably want a dual stack IPv4 and IPv6. Um, that is still marked as alpha. Um, in other words, not, not really completely ready in, in Kubernetes. Um, I think it came in in version 1.16 of Kubernetes. Um, and is, is still, uh, still got a few rough edges. Um, but check it out. Um, and again, uh, they, they need help from people checking it out and uh, people making it better. Um, so Casey, what about this, uh, you know, why are we executing binaries? So the CNI protocol does kind of seem a bit old fashioned, right? Why not gRPC like every other Kubernetes and container related API like CRI, CSI, and so on and so forth? Well, I mean, it's a long story and somewhat historical, but ultimately it's because CNI came out of Rocket, the container runtime engine from CoreOS, which has, which is always daemonless, right? But executing binaries is a really simple API, don't need a daemon, and it just fit in with the entire ecosystem. This simplicity ultimately led partially to CNI's adoption, right? However, the world has moved on, things have changed, and we would like to think about opening up the possibility for gRPC in CNI v2.0. We're running quickly out of time, but Brian, would you like to highlight some cool chain plugins? Yeah, uh, so we talked about chaining earlier, calling one thing, then another, then another on the on the same interface, and, and so people have really run with that idea. Um, you can do your port mappings, you can, uh, tune things like tweaking the MAC address and, and uh, Linux system settings. Um, actually, that reminds me, one thing we wanted to stress, uh, CNI plugins exist for Linux and Windows. Um, I, in my job, I tend to work on, on Linux, but we shouldn't uh, lose sight of that. The, um, the ecosystem works on, on Windows too. So, um, sorry, back to, back to the question I was supposed to be talking about. Um, Another kind of tuning is is bandwidth, but it's actually a separate uh, plugin. Uh, doesn't matter; you can call as many as you like. Um, we have a plugin to try and interact better with uh, firewalls on on Linux um, and uh, source based routing, uh, choosing where exactly your traffic is going to go based on the um, where it's coming from, which uh, uh, again is a, is a cool feature that that some a little niche, but some people like that. Okay, I think we are done on our list of uh, frequently asked questions. So uh, let's put up some links. Um, the deep dive session I've mentioned already, if you're watching this live, it's tomorrow. Um, and uh, the uh, GitHub links where the code lives, um, the CNI is the spec and library. That's the bit that moves a bit slower. And the plugins, well, that's the plugins, moves quite a lot faster. We have our own Slack uh, channel in the CNCF Slack. Um, but do remember, if your question is really about Kubernetes, uh, they have their own area, in fact, their own Slack. So I put a link up for that too. Casey, you want to wrap up? Sure. I Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, we're here to answer questions and please join us of course in the Slack and on GitHub. And I will end the presentation with this slide just to leave it up so we can reference it if there's any final questions. But thank you very much for watching.
Yeah, thanks. Bye. Oh, hello. Live. Looks like we're live uh, online. And um, uh, so uh, thanks for all the questions. Great questions coming in. We answered a lot of them uh, by typing. I wanted to pick up uh, one that came in earlier, uh, which is basically how, how, what are some things to think about when you're picking a CNI plugin? And um, uh, that, that, which is obviously a great question. Um, so I think I would I would highlight uh, one key difference. There there are some of them that work as what's called an overlay. So they they kind of make a whole uh, virtual network inside your real network. And there are some that run on your real network. And um, so basically, uh, you you might have constraints on your real network. You might have not enough address space or uh, limitations or, or something like that that might really drive you in the direction of an overlay. Uh, so that's going to narrow the, the, the choice down. Overlay has a, um, a little bit of extra work. Uh, so there's a performance hit to, to run an overlay. Um, so if you don't really need an overlay, maybe you're going to choose one of the ones that doesn't do that. Um, but that, that's, that's a really uh, pretty fundamental divide. Um, between the ones that, are, that work by being an overlay and the ones that don't. Um, then beyond that, uh, there are some features uh, you might look at, like do they do encryption? Do they do network policy? Um, can they handle, for instance, multicast traffic? Um, that, that if you had a specific need, that's going to narrow down your choices. Um, after that, you know, it, sort of personal preference or, uh, uh, you know, brand recognition or something like that. The, the, um, uh, th that's one of the great things uh, that we really try to create with this whole world is, is a lot of competition. And, um, I'm sorry that makes life harder when, cause you have to choose, but we do think competition drives the bar up in general for everyone. So there you go. Right. And if you're using, uh, something say like Maltus, or you're doing something where you are not using Kubernetes, and you care very specifically about the networking technology. So full disclosure, I work on OpenShift, and OpenShift makes it relatively easy to use Multis to install extra networking plugins. And for those, that if you're doing something advanced like that, you probably care a lot more about the specific technology that's being used, right? Sometimes you just want to bridge, you want to use a bridge where you're going to bridge your East 1 or East 2 into something else, or if you're very performance sensitive, you might want, you might want to be using something like SRIOV where you use a device plugin and a little bit more duct tape to pull it all together such that you have a dedicated PCI lane for whatever it is that your advanced networking configuration might be, right? So in that case, you do need to care about the specific plugins networking implementation as opposed to just thinking of that as a as an unimportant detail. Uh, so a couple more questions um, we could look at. Uh, as well, long as when do we do that? Oh, that's Did a great question. Yeah, let's do that one. Right. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, dynamic configuration is like I like I had mentioned in the presentation is for anything that's plugin specific. I'm sorry, that is container specific. So, the two most widely used instances for this would be bandwidth and host ports, but there are others as well, right? Kubernetes itself has some glue that uh, puts together uh, host ports, which are a fundamental part of the pod spec, and bandwidth, which is a magic annotation. Um, in addition, so for example, in the Multis world that we have built, uh, the Multis sandcastle that we have built in OpenShift, we also use dynamic configuration so you can give pods static IP addresses on their secondary interfaces. Um, so one of the dynamic configuration conventions or standards is to request that a specific pod have a specific IP address. I'm sorry, that a specific interface have a specific IP address, right? So that's like a classic example of dynamic configuration since you don't want every container to have the same IP address, unless you're totally crazy, which some of you may be. Um, so uh, th there's a question, uh, does overlay reduce the IP address management? I, I don't entirely follow what that means, but it maybe refers to something I said about if you were short on address space. Um, so the, the point being that, that an overlay network uh, is, is isolated. It, it runs effectively in its own address space. Um, so, for instance, you, you could run 10 overlay networks 
all reusing the same set of addresses. This is more of a problem in IPv4, um, but then that's that's what a lot of people are using. Um, so uh, yeah, an overlay gives you some flexibility because um, as, as long as you don't want to talk to an IP address uh, outside of your cluster, you can use whatever address you like because you're, you're, um, you're in a little bubble. I think we are out of time. Oh, yes. And hand over to Casey. Uh, sorry, uh, my laptop decided to drop out your audio. But uh, in any case, uh, thank you everybody much. Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I think we have to uh, end the presentation here. I uh, hope the rest of you have a great KubeCon, and uh, I will see you in Slack. I will see you all virtually in all of the places in which we gather. Thank you. Thank you.